Well, good morning, church. We are so glad that you're able to join us this morning to worship God together, to lift his name on high. And whether you want to stand or sit or sing out loud or sing in your head, it just doesn't matter because together with one heart, with one voice, we're going to declare the name of Jesus in this place, that there is no one greater than our Lord God. Come on, here we go. Come on, we sing together. Your love so great, Jesus in all things. I've seen a glimpse of your heart a billion years. Still I'll be singing. How can I praise you enough? How can I praise you enough? You are the Lord Almighty, outshining all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean, oh, nothing else compares. Come on, we sing. Creation calls all to the Savior. We are alive for your praise in earth and sky. No one is higher. I got no wonders you reign. I got no wonders you reign. Oh, every voice. You are the Lord Almighty. I'm shining all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean Oh, nothing else compares You are the Lord Almighty Outshining all the stars in glory Your love is like the wildest ocean Oh, nothing else compares Nothing else compares. It's no one greater, Lord. No one higher, Lord. You know, the love of God says this in 1 Corinthians 13. Your love never gives up. Your, it never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. That's the love of God. That's who we're coming to this morning. That's who we're pressing in and our worship to. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what your circumstances might say, I want to tell you this morning that our God is faithful. He loves you so much. His love endures forever. And we're going to keep singing. We're going to keep worshiping Him this morning and declare that love over our lives. So come on. Lord, we love you, Lord. Come on. Not to us. But to your name, we lift up all praise. Not to us, but to your name, we lift up all praise. Not to us, but to your name, we lift up all praise. Not to us, but to your name, we lift up all praise. You are the Lord Almighty, outshining all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean, oh, nothing else compares. You are the Lord Almighty, how shining all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean, oh, nothing else compares. Not to us, but to your name, we lift up. All praise, not to us, 
Nothing else compares to you, Lord. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone oh praise the of the Lord our God, oh praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing Your praise, oh Lord, oh Lord our God. Then on the third. At break of dawn, the sun of heaven rose again. Come on, oh trampled death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. Oh, praise the of the Lord our God, oh praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing Your praise, oh Lord, oh Lord our God. Shall we turn? In robes of white, the blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' Come on, church, with one voice now. Just begin to lift up the name of Jesus over your circumstances, over your situation, over your finances today. Let's declare that there is no one like Jesus. There is no one like our God. 
He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And He deserves our praise this morning. So come on, we're going to worship Him together. Come on. Hey. Well, oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore, For endless days we will sing. Time, come on. Well, oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing of a praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Hey, this is the part of the service where we are going to come around communion this morning. It's always a great privilege for us to be able to share communion together. I know at the moment that we are going through the book of Acts and this is one of the foundation stones, the pillars of the early church that they had communion together. Even though we're not together uh, at church in a physical building this morning, we can do it in our homes and I would invite you to join with me as we have communion. You know, just before we come around uh, the emblems this morning, what I want to do is I want to read to you from Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 to 29, where it reads like this. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus, and all have been united with Christ in baptism, have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is a no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. You know, this morning as we come around communion and we remember that Jesus died on the cross for us this morning, I wanna to say to you, each and every person that is watching this, we are one, that we are all part of this together. Those who belong to Jesus Christ, no longer slave or free, Jew or Gentile, male or female. God sees us all equally in his sight. And I just want to thank God this morning that we are living in freedom of that this morning because of what Jesus did on the cross. So if you join with me and maybe you want to take your piece of cracker or matzo bread or whatever you have this morning and you can take it and we are going to remember Jesus' body being broken on the cross for us this morning as we take the bread together. Thank you. And also now we are gonna take the cup. Maybe you have a little bit of juice uh, and you can take that as remember Jesus' blood. His blood was shed so that we could be free, so that we could be united with him, so that he could look at us no longer as, as a sinner, but somebody who has been saved by grace, no longer looking through the lens of, of somebody who, who uh, can never achieve and never get into relationship with Jesus, but because of what he did and his blood was shed, we are free people here today. We are free people that can enter into a relationship with Jesus. So let us take the cup this morning and thank God for his pleasure, precious blood that covers a multitude of sins. So we're going to pray together. Father God, we thank you. Father, we thank you for your word, that Lord Jesus, that you look at us, Father, as one. And that, Father, I pray this morning that, Lord Jesus, that you will be with each and every person. That God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on a cross so that we could be free so that we could enter into a personal relationship with you, O oh God. And Father, I pray for every person this morning, that God, that you will be with them, that Lord Jesus, that you will sustain them, and that God, that we will always remember and never forget the incredible sacrifice that you paid on the cross, so that ultimately we could spend eternity with you. God, we thank you for it. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When the music fades And all is stripped away And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. Come on, we sing. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak, though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart Coming back I'm coming back to Heart of worship when it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. When it's all about you, it's all about you. It's coming back, I'm coming back to you. Heart of worship When it's all about you oh, It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. No one else, no one else, Lord. It's all about you. It's all about you. Come on, sing that with me. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. It's all about you. Coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made 
It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. All about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. It's all for you. Surrender to you, Lord. Well, good morning, church. It's so good to see you. And we're going to do what we love to do and catch in with a few families. It's time for family life. It's been a busy year for us. We moved to Oxton, we joined Life Church, we've made loads of new friends, and now we're in lockdown. But we've been keeping busy. Renovating our basement. Gardening. Lots of DIY around the flat. Researching family history. Keeping an eye on my old mother. Getting to know the neighbours. We did FaceTime guitar and ukulele lessons with our grandchildren. Helping out with the homeschooling generally. We've been keeping up with the church online. And using my collection of old postcards to write to friends. And we're looking forward to seeing you all again in person very soon. Bye. Bye. Hi, everyone. We just wanted to say hi to you. We thought it would be about time that you saw our faces after so many weeks. So we've been um, actually enjoying some things about lockdown. We've been enjoying a slower pace of life. We've been enjoying having a lot more rest time, time to read. Um, I haven't been baking, which is what everyone else has been doing because I've just become no good. Um, I've been homeschooling Zeke, which has made me realise how much I never want to be a teacher. Um, but we're doing really well. We miss you guys, but we're doing so well. Zeke, what have you been doing and what have you enjoyed about lockdown? Well, I have been playing Xbox with my friends, slipping and sliding with father and barbecuing. Aaron? I have been spending time reading spending time with you and Zeke and enjoying this wonderful weather that we are all experiencing at the moment. We love you, we miss you and uh, we can't wait to get back to some kind of normality where we can all meet together. Have a great rest of the day church, we love you and Bye we'll guys. see you soon. Au revoir. Bye. Hi. Hey everyone, it's Ben. And Sammy. Parkinson from Parco fame. Uh, we're here in mum and dad's garden um, in, enjoying this swing uh, don't get motion sickness uh, we've missed you all haven't we Sammy miss you loads we do um, we've missed all your faces it's great to be able to commune on Sunday mornings virtually um, and on Tuesdays as well but you know it's nothing like being there in person and being in fellowship with everyone uh, so you know we hope you're all being Keeping sane, um, enjoying the great weather. I know it's raining now, but you know the plants. The plants need rain, so you know that's answer the prayer because we're trying to do the lawn and it wasn't going so well without rain. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone um, uh, working in NHS or uh, working as key workers in our church. I know Sammy's uh, working in a school, a nursery, keeping kids, uh, babies occupied. Uh, I'm uh, making sure water is clean or selling water cleaning stuff I don't know I don't know what I do no one knows what I do um, but yeah hope to all see you soon we love you all bye bye Well, thanks so much guys for sending those videos in. It is always so good to see you. I've just got a couple of notices, a couple of things I want to update you on. We are a week into our Acts Daily Devotion series. The videos this week have been incredible and thank you for everyone who's led us daily through the book of Acts. And if you've missed out or you're new to church this morning, then why not join us starting tomorrow at 8 a.m. every single day, we put out a video on one chapter of the book of Acts. And we ask you to join us, read it, watch the video and join us as we go on the journey through the book of Acts through this next month. It's going to be so good and I know that God is speaking to so many people already so why not join us and tomorrow morning as well as the video going live at 8am we've got our Monday morning devotion. 
these times have been an outstanding time together for us to come together as a church and, and really just hear from the heart of, of someone in church who's going to be sharing a devotion. So why not join us tomorrow? It's going to be a fantastic time. All the details get sent out via the website. And if you need any more information, then head to info at mylifechurch.co.uk. We're now going to come around the preach and we're super blessed today to have Reuben Morley going to be speaking to us. So get your Bible ready, get your notepad ready and let's lean in to hear what Reuben's going to share with us this morning. What a great time we're having in church this morning. It's a real privilege to be with you, to be able to share with you a word that I believe that God has placed on my heart and my prayer is that it would encourage you, that it would edify you and that it would really challenge you to go deeper into the things of God. You know, it's been a difficult week for so many of us. Not only is coronavirus still in the news, but we've heard of George Floyd that was murdered. And so often in times like this, we can ask the question, where are you, God? What are you doing? And I simply want to remind you this morning that God is in the midst of tragedy, that he is still working. Many, many of us know the song Waymaker, and we know the bridge that says, God, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. We know that he never stops working. A lot of us will quote Romans 8, 28, for God works together for the good of all those that love him. But so often it can be very difficult to see. And there's a number of go-to prayers for myself. I'll pray, Lord, would you give me wisdom? Lord, would you make me more like you? But one of the prayers that I'm finding myself praying more and more at the moment is, God, would you give me eyes to see what you're doing? Because I believe when we receive eyes to see what God is doing in a situation, it gives us permission to partner with him. It gives us opportunity to come alongside him and bring his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And so at this time, we need to see what God is doing. And around 10 weeks ago, I began to pray this prayer in the midst of the coronavirus peak. And I asked God, what are you doing at this time? What do we need to learn? How will we leave lockdown different to how we came in? And so I just want to share with you six points in what I believe God has been doing in this situation. And just as a caveat, very quickly, you know, as I share these points, some of you may say, oh, I wish that God had been doing that in my life over the last eight to 10 weeks, but I feel like I've missed the boat. I want to tell you that you can never miss the boat as a Christian because God's mercies are new every single morning. And the Bible tells us that we can approach his throne with boldness because of what Jesus did at the cross. We can come to God and we can receive help and grace in time of need. And that grace is the very grace that will empower you to put these things into action. And so my prayer is as I go through these points that you will be challenged and edified as I've already said and you will leave this morning and this afternoon different. So let's jump straight in. The first thing that I believe that God has done and is doing, even as lockdown eases, is that he has given us an opportunity to step into a fuller measure of rest. I don't know about you, but before lockdown hit, I was busy. I did not recognize that I was busy, but it was when the brakes were put on that I recognized that I was so busy, actually with a lot of stuff that I didn't need to do. And you know what can happen when we're so busy with things that aren't actually necessarily that important? We can find ourselves pushing God to the side when actually as Christians we're called to rest in him. Because as we rest in him, that's where our strength comes from. When we rest in him, that's where our healing comes from. When we rest in him, that's when we are uh, in a position where we can walk as he walked and bring change to the world around us. In the book of Matthew, Jesus says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I just want to say on point number one, it's important that we rest in Jesus. That it's important that we find time to Sabbath. It's important that we take time out to simply be with family and lay all the busyness to one side. And so I encourage you and my prayer is this, that as we ease out of lockdown over the coming weeks, don't just get back to the grind. Don't just get back to the rat race and jump on the treadmill, but actually spend time with Jesus. You know, just find time every day to simply rest in him and get your strength from him. Point number two, I believe that at this time, God has made us aware of misplaced trust and he has brought or he is right now bringing refinement. In other words, God wants us to trust him 
completely and live free from fear. In every aspect of our life, God wants us to trust him. You know, for many of us in this period, and I'm not ex- excluding myself, we may be fearing for our finances, fearing for our health, fe- fearing for our family. Even at this time as lockdown eases, fearing what the future will look like. And God is just simply highlighting the fact that actually we could be trusting in other things other than him. God never gives us a spirit of fear. Fear is not from God. It says that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so it's important for us as Christians to recognize what fear is. I've put this, fear is Ill- illegitimate trust in the systems of this world. And when the systems of this world begin to fail as they have been, fear is the response. And so as Christians, the importance is recognizing that God and God alone is called to be our firm foundation, that actually we don't incorporate him in and trust, in it, trust him with just simply parts of our life, but we allow him to take over and take hold of all of our life together. The Bible clearly talks around fear. Do not be afraid is mentioned 365 times, which I love because it's a reminder for each day of the year that we can trust God, that we don't have to be afraid. In the Sermon on the Mount, in the Gospels, Jesus talks about how we can trust him with everything, that we don't have to fear as those that don't know Christ fear around things of this world because actually he will look after us. He will put clothes on our back. He will feed us. He will look after us as he looks after the lilies of the field. And so we can have a a childlike faith in simply trusting him in everything. And that's a challenge, but that's something we can learn and we can grow in during this time of lockdown. Point number three, I believe in this time, and a lot of you will agree with this, I believe his heart has been to strengthen the family unit. In Isaiah 60 verse one to four, it reads this, arise, Let your light shine for all to see, for the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Look and see, for everyone is coming home. Your songs, are, your sons, sorry, are coming from distant lands. Your little daughters will be carried home. In other words, I believe in this season, God is bringing families back together. You know, in this season, we've been forced to slow down. As I said, we've been forced to let go of some of the busyness and we've been forced to prioritize and recognize what's really important. And God has a heart for families. And I don't know about you, but I've cherished this time of being with my family and doing things that I wouldn't normally have done. And my challenge again to you and God's challenge to you is as this time passes, don't lose those family moments. Perhaps you say, oh my goodness, you know, I wish I was with my family, but actually I've been isolated by myself. I believe there's still opportunity. You know, I've got cousins that I would never speak to apart from special family occasions that live the other side of the country. We've done Zoom quizzes that we would have never done. We've talked to each other around subjects that we would have never done. And there is a closeness there now that wasn't there before. And when I talk about family, I'm not just talking about valuing our family members that are, that are blood in the bloodline that are blood related, that are, that are those close to us. I'm talking about the church family. I believe that God has done something in this time where he has strengthened us as a church. You know, as I would come to church on a Sunday and we would meet in this room, there would be so many of you that I would smile at and I would say good morning, but that's as far as it would go. But I sense that through COVID-19, through lockdown, actually God has brought us together closer than ever before. That actually when we come back together, whenever that is, we're going to have a party. People are going to be hugging if we're allowed to hug. We're going to be worshipping like we've never worshipped before. Hasn't it been great having the, the Monday devotionals, the Tuesdays on Facebook Live, the Thursdays, the Sundays, people chatting together and people just valuing and getting to know each other like they would have never done before. It's been so important and I want to encourage you that as we come out of this time, let's not lose that. Let's see ourselves as a family that are on a journey together. We've all got something to bring to the table and we can all support and edify one another. And so that is something that I believe the Lord is doing at this time. Point number four, I believe that God is calling us and has called us into a greater level of devotion. Jesus spoke in Matthew 6, 22, explaining that the eye is the lamp of the body. And if our vision is clear, our whole body will be flooded with light. 
In other words, when he is our sole single focus, the light of God will shine beautifully through our lives. And I believe that this time God has said, come back to me. We've had the Sunday morning services. We've had the connect groups, but he's saying, spend more time in my presence. You know, I don't believe that that a single moment in the presence of Jesus is ever wasted because just one moment, no matter how long or how short it is, has the power to change us, to heal us, to bring us closer to him. And so I want to, I want to challenge us at this time, if we haven't already, to spend more time with him. What does that look like? You can spend time in prayer, talking to him. We touched on that through the last series. Spend time in God's word. Spend time hearing his heart through the love letter that we call the Bible. Spend time just putting the worship on and spend time in the secret place. And that's the place where you can close the door and just say, God, I need you afresh this morning. God desires our hearts. You know, for many of you in this season, actually during lockdown, you may have, you may have pulled away instead of coming to God. And I want to tell you not to believe the lie that the lack of having a normal Sunday morning service or having face-to-face conversations can stop you from entering into the presence of God. Actually, you can access his presence directly wherever you are, whether it's in your car, whether it's at home, whether it's in your bedroom, in the garden, wherever you are, just spend time with Jesus. I want to encourage you to seek him afresh today. And so whether you're at home and the house is full of family noise, or you're alone in the stillness, take time today to talk to God. Number five, and this is one that I'm so excited about, and it's this. God is making us aware of the need to share the gospel with those that we know and those that we love. Now more than ever, I believe that God is stirring something in our hearts as believers, where we recognize the importance of sharing our faith with those around us. At this time, now more than ever, people need Jesus. They need the hope that is found in the gospel. And we have the answer to give them. And it's important, and I believe that what God is doing, as I've said, is he is stirring something up on the inside of us to say, hey, I have a responsibility to share my faith. For many of you, you may have never seen yourself as an evangelist. You may not be an evangelist, but the reality is that each and every one of us are called to be witnesses. Each and every one of us have a responsibility to share our faith. Jesus gave us the great commission to go into the whole world and make disciples, each and every one of us. It was a commission, it was a sending, it wasn't a suggestion. And so each and every one of us are starting to look for opportunities. How can I love this person? How can I be a witness to that person? How can I share my faith? I don't know about you, but for me, it's caused me to sharpen my knowledge of the gospel. It's caused me to sharpen the ways in which I can communicate the message of Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross so that people can understand clearly what they need to do to be saved. And so I'm excited for what God is doing in this season. Final point and point number six. And I just want to take a little bit longer on this point because this is aimed at those of you that perhaps are listening and those that are watching that don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe someone has given you the link to tune in. Maybe you were just scouring through Facebook and you've come and stumbled across this service. I believe now more than ever, God is working in the hearts of people that don't know Christ. I believe that he is drawing them, that he is softening their hearts and he is making them realize that actually you need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The reality is this, that there is nothing that will satisfy our hearts. There is nothing that will satisfy your heart apart from a relationship with God because that is what you were born for. You were born for a relationship with him. He has a plan and a purpose for your life and he loves you. And so I believe at this time that God is knocking on the door of your heart. And the question I have is, are you willing to let him in? And so I just want to take a minute just to go through the gospel. I've already touched on a little bit that God loves you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. You will never be satisfied apart from a relationship with God because that is what you were born for. But listen, the Bible says that we've all sinned, that we've all fallen short of God's standard. In other words, we've all made the decision to make ourselves Lord of our lives. We've all decided to go our own way instead of making God the Lord of our lives. And the Bible also says that the wages of sin, that sin that is so frequent in our lives, is death. But it also says the free gift of God 
is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And you have a free gift today to be able to receive if you want to receive it. Because God loves you so much that he did not want to leave you in your sin. But he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for you, to take your sin and to take your shame. And he took it straight to the grave. And I want to remind you and tell you this morning that he did not remain in the grave, but he rose again not just victorious over sin, but victorious over death, that you no longer have to fear death because he defeated it, that actually you can accept and receive eternal life as a gift. And you know what? Eternal life is not just heaven one day. Jesus did not just die so that you could go to heaven one day. He died to put heaven inside of you. He died to give you a transformed life, an abundant life. And so you can receive him today. You can receive him this morning. And I want to tell you, your life will never be the same again. And so if that is you, I want to encourage you to simply press the button on the sidebar that says something like, I've raised my hand. As I said, Jesus did not remain in the grave, but he rose again three days later. That we as Christians live in the reality of victory. And as Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father, he sent his Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit can be with you today, leading you, guiding you, helping you, comforting you, healing you. He's your friend and your guide. And we want to just encourage you in this moment to give your life to Christ because God is drawing people back home. I just want to take one moment now just to pray for you. Lord God, I want to thank you for every person that has made a decision today, this morning, to follow you. I thank you that you love them. And I pray that at this time, when they've made that decision to live their life for you, that you would ascend your Holy Spirit, that you would lead them, guide them, comfort them. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you for what you've done this morning and we pray that you will be with us this week. Amen. Well, what a great preach there by Reuben. And I pray that you've been encouraged this morning and built up through what Reuben said. You know, now we're going to come around our giving. Our giving isn't just something that we do uh, because we have to do it, but it is something that we get to do this morning. That we can give of our finances, give of our own resources into the storehouse to ultimately advance the kingdom of God. So I want to thank you. I know we say this every week, but I, we don't say it lightly and I definitely don't say it lightly is that we thank you for each and every person that partners with us here at Life Church, not just by coming along, not just by being part of the church, but actually giving into the local house as well. So I want to thank you this morning for everybody that does that. And uh, you can now go ahead. There's a small tab on your screen and you can give this morning of your tithes and your offerings into the local church. Thank you. God bless you, church. Thanks for joining us this morning. What a great time of worship we had and a fantastic word from Reuben. We've got so much happening this week at Life Church, so make sure you stay connected via our social media and we'll see you tomorrow morning for our next daily devotion through the Book of Acts. Have a great week and we'll see you soon. God bless. Yeah.